Tucked away in Utah's northwestern corner lies a remote land of mystique, wilderness, and ancient secrets, the Raft River Mountains. The Raft Rivers are a seldom visited mountain range that offer the intrepid visitor solitude and beauty, two things that cannot be taken for granted in the world we live in. Containing Utah's oldest rocks and Utah's only population of Yellowstone cutthroat trout, the Raft River Mountains have an illustrious story to tell. I had the pleasure of visiting them recently, and I'm excited to share with you guys the Raft River Chronicles, 2.5 billion years of history in northwestern Utah. The Raft River Mountains are located in the northwestern corner of Utah, roughly two hours from Salt Lake City. To get there from SLC, simply take I-15 north for 72 miles until you get to the I-15-I-84 junction in Tremonton. Instead of merging to head to I-15 north, simply continue to stay on I-84 west. Continue on I-84 for 46 miles. Take exit 5 for Utah State Route 30 and head west on State Route 30 for 16 miles. You will continue straight onto Utah State Route 42 and stay on 42 for 9 miles. You'll cross the border into Idaho, turn left onto a dirt road named Strevel Road. Head west on Strevel Road until you get to Clear Creek Road, another dirt road. Turn left onto Clear Creek Road so that you're heading south. Clear Creek Road is your access road to the Raft Rivers. Simply continue on Clear Creek Road for about 6 miles until you get into the mountains. You'll cross back into Utah before entering the Raft Rivers, and you can camp at Clear Creek Campground to kind of set that up as your base, or you can continue driving on Clear Creek Road until you see a cool spot you'll want to stop at. Once you do all that, you'll be in the heart of the Raft Rivers. And on the road ahead of us is the beautiful Raft River Range here in extreme northern Utah. Nice, I agree. And uh, we're headed up to Clear Creek to go for a little hike and uh, see the scenery. So the Raft Rivers are beautiful and they're really interesting geologically speaking. So let's get up there. Excuse me? Were you saying something? Oh, gotcha. So right now we're in Idaho but those mountains are in Utah. We're about to cross the border. And just looking around the scenery here, we can see the Albion Range way over there, northwest of us. City of Rocks is just over there where we just came from. And then north over there, see the cloud of pollution? That's all the Snake River Plain between Burley and Pocatello. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go up into the mountains here. So we are here at Clear Creek Campground in the Raft River Range, and we're just going to go for a little hike up Bull Canyon into the woods. So uh, let's do it. And the views here all around us are quite stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. As Becky said, show some respect for your elders. This rock, very old. You know, speaking of rocks, let's actually take a few minutes to really dive into the geologic history of the Raft River Mountains. Let's start by talking about the rocks that compose the range, and then we'll finish out by talking about how the mountain range itself was formed. Come on, let's talk rocks. The Raft River Mountains have an interesting geologic history dating back 2.5 billion years. This story is best told through the rocks that outcrop in the range. The oldest rocks that outcrop in the Raft Rivers are also the oldest rocks in the state of Utah. Known as the Green Creek Complex, these rocks date back 2.5 billion years, and they are chiefly composed of schist, a medium to high grade metamorphic rock. This schist sheds light on what the area looked like back when these rocks were deposited. Siltstone, shale, and or mudstone are the original rocks that undergo metamorphism to turn into schist, making them schist's protoliths. Furthermore, they originate as mud or silt in low-energy environments, such as swamps. All this put together suggests that the 2.5 billion year old schist in the Raft Rivers originated as mud in a swamp, and over the years it got compacted, heated up, and pressurized to such a degree that it turned into shale and eventually schist. That's some good schist, bro. 
The green crete complex tends to be relatively gray in color due to large amounts of biotite mica present in the schist, and it's mainly deposited in the core of the mountain range. Stratigraphically above the green crete complex lies the Elba quartzite. This unit originated as sandstone, created 1.5 billion to 600 million years ago due to the erosion of the Archean basement rocks of the area. The sandstone was then metamorphosed to quartzite, as it was buried under thousands of feet of sedimentary rock, exposing it to high temperatures and pressures. The Elba quartzite is distinctly rich in chromium, giving it a slightly green hue. This unit is deposited throughout most of the range, surrounding the Green Creek complex. The youngest rocks that outcrop in the Raft River Mountains are Paleozoic metasedimentary rocks, dating back 500 to 300 million years. These units are chiefly composed of marble, quartzite, and slate, subject to low-grade metamorphism over the years. They originated as limestone, dolostone, sandstone, and shale, deposited when western Utah was a shallow sea, off the coast of what would become North America. The main formation in this group is the Ochre Formation, a unit that is widespread throughout northwestern Utah and northeastern Nevada. The Ochre Formation dates back 350 to 300 million years to the Carboniferous period, and is composed of lightly metamorphosed limestones and dolostones. These Paleozoic sedimentary rocks outcrop on the flanks of the Raft River Mountains. Now that we've discussed the rocks that compose the Raft Rivers, let's talk about how the Raft Rivers themselves were formed. The Raft River Mountains are the eastern lobe of the Albion Raft River Grouse Creek Metamorphic Core Complex. That's a freaking mouthful of a name, so I'll refer to the area as the ARG MCC. The ARG MCC has quite the eventful history. We just discussed the main rocks of the Raft Rivers, and between the end of the deposition of the Ochre Formation 300 million years ago and about 42 million years ago, the mountain range had a pretty chill period of no major geological events. The severe orogeny did kick off during the Cretaceous period and persisted from 160 to 50 million years ago, but that mainly affected the Wasatch Range to the east, and all it really did to the Raft Rivers was slightly metamorphose that ochre formation. With that being said, things got really eventful 42 million years ago. Initial volcanism began in the area during the Eocene Epoch, from about 42 to 34 million years ago, or MA. The Almo Pluton, located in City of Rocks, formed 32 to 28 MA, a few million years after this initial period of volcanism. During the Miocene epoch, roughly 15 million years ago, the major geologic process of the region that continues to shape the land today began, basin and range crustal extension. This had a profound effect on the ARG MCC, as the metamorphic core complex wouldn't exist without that crustal extension, which generated a litany of faults in the area. Beginning 14 million years ago, these faults became highly active, and the main processes that formed this metamorphic core complex were set into motion. The process of exhumation, or bringing rocks from deep in the earth to the surface of the earth along faults, began roughly 14 MA during the Middle Miocene. Detrital zircon studies show that the ARG MCC began its development on the east side of the metamorphic core complex at this time. From 13.5 to 10.5 MA, rapid slip along low angle detachment faults, or decalements, and high angle normal faults exhumed the Green Creek complex, Elba quartzite, and Paleozoic metasedimentary rocks to the surface of the earth. From 10.5 to 8.2 MA, continued slip resulted in topographic depression in the immediate vicinity of the complex, effectively forming the Raft River Basin to the north of the range. After 8.2 MA, the ARG MCC was rotated by younger faults that extended the area in east-west direction. This aforementioned exhumation occurred in the ARG MCC for 7 million years, eventually petering out 7 million years ago. No igneous intrusions are present in the Raft River Mountains, but they are abundant in the Albion and Grouse Creek sections of the metamorphic core complex. Additionally, the Raft Rivers are unique in the fact that they are an east-west rather than a north-south oriented mountain range in the Great Basin. This is due to the fact that they are actually just a lobe of a larger metamorphic core complex. While they are geographically their own unique range, geologically speaking, they are part of a larger range that is mainly north-south oriented. 
The ARG MCC is extinct today and has been extinct for the last 7 million years, but if you want to visit a metamorphic core complex that is currently active, I recommend heading over to the Ruby East Humboldt Metamorphic Core Complex, about 100 miles away in northeastern Nevada. As you could have probably guessed, the Ruby Mountains and East Humboldt Range compose the Ruby East Humboldt Metamorphic Core Complex, or REH MCC. The faults that bound the REH MCC are still active, and actually produced a magnitude 6.0 earthquake in 2008. Now that we've learned all about the geology of the Raft River Mountains, let's get back to the hike. So we're going up uh, Bull Canyon. It's the name of this canyon here. You can already see to the left, we've got a lot of aspens, Douglas firs along the uh, creek, and a lot of single leaf pinon pine here. So yeah, the raft rivers are quite interesting in terms of their biodiversity, especially when it comes to conifer species. Here we're at the northern edge of the Great Basin, and you've got Douglas fir, you've got subalpine fir, Rocky Mountain lodgepole pine, limber pine, and a lot of aspen, a lot of ash, a lot of cottonwood, and you've also got these single leaf pinon pines here, as well as Utah junipers and Rocky Mountain junipers. So right now we're at about 6,600 feet in elevation, and you can see on this northern, on the northern side, because we're on the northern side of the range, heavily forested. However, if you look at the range from the south, it's almost bare. It's because a lot of these species that live here, the Douglas firs, the subalpine firs, the pines, they like the more northerly slopes. Um, the southerly slopes are just a little too dry, a little too hot for them. So yeah, a little, little uh, biodiversity lesson here. Some of the animals you can find here, mule deer, elk, moose, coyote, mountain lion, you know, your gambit, lots of birds of prey, lots of songbirds, and yeah, a lot of species out here in the raft rivers. So we're coming up to the edge of the woods here in a minute. Pretty stoked for that. And of course, how could I forget to mention the Curleaf Mountain Mahogany. So we are up here in the woods, which was the destination, and got a nice little melange of uh, Douglas fir, subalpine fir, Rocky Mountain juniper, aspen, Rocky Mountain maple, and uh, pinon pine around us. Pretty cool, pretty cool scenery. And just saw a hummingbird, which I tried to get video of. I don't know if it really came out, but yeah, love it here. Raft River Range, Utah. Hummingbird. All right, we are now headed back. Raft rivers were beautiful, but it's time to go on our next stop. The woods are great here. Although the bugs were absolutely biting me. So there's that. And the views coming back down from up there, Pool Creek, beautiful. Again, that same unit of rock that's just slowly dipping towards the ground that was exhumed or brought up on a detachment fault or decolement in this metamorphic core complex here in the Raft Rivers. The Raft River Mountains are an absolutely stunning locality that's well worth a visit. You're unlikely to see any crowds out here, and the sense of mystique and awe that this wilderness evokes is second to none. If you're interested in learning all about the world around you and seeing geology in action, this place is a must visit. It's a bit off the beaten path, but that's part of what makes this place so cool. Hopefully you learned all about the 2.5 billion years of Raft River Chronicles and enjoyed doing so. Thanks for watching, and be sure to stay tuned for the next episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and check out some of our other adventures right here. As always, guys, thanks again, and peace!